get that recording started. All righty, so um, let's go ahead and jump in. Today you're going to be learning all about uh, Book Creator and um, it's one of my favorites because it allows our kids to be creative. Um, just some little kind of housekeeping um, things before we get started. Uh, I will be posting an attendance link in the chat at the end of our session for you guys to fill out a Google form um, so that you can get attendance for today. So please stick with us and uh, that way you can earn your hour and a half of credit. Um, I want to mention that um, both myself and Michelle are on Twitter. So um, we would love for you guys to follow us so we can really build our Northside PLN and then we can follow you all back. Uh, so if you wanna take a minute to check that out, um, mine is, my Twitter handle is at TechCoachRobles and then we have at TechCoachBeCoach. And then these are the um, handles for our academic technology uh, Twitter page and Facebook page. All right, moving on. I always love to share our curriculum and instruction vision with you all, just to kind of keep that in our heads, make sure we're referring back to that. So um, it does have an update um, kind of recently. So um, it is every day, every student grows in confidence, curiosity and capability. And I'm excited because I feel like Book Creator allows our kids um, to do these things. So if this is what we want our kids to be able to do and um, be whenever they graduate from a Northside school, uh, one of the tools that we can use to really get our kids creative and uh, excited about learning is Book Creator. Some norms for our session today. Uh, use your technology for learning. Uh, participate actively. This is a hands-on session. Um, so you will be getting little breaks here and there to actually go and try out the things that I show you. So we would love it if you would really participate with us so that you can really learn how to use the tool. Um, we know that we learn best by participating in uh, doing things rather than just kind of sitting back and consuming the information. So um, please uh, participate with us, reflect it's with your campus. Uh, if you love Book Creator, share that with them. We're gonna get started with a, a quick little minty. Um, so if you can either open a new tab on your computer, so a separate tab and go to minty.com or you can um, just use your cell phone. So minty.com, I'm going to open it up as well and share the, um, the code, so if you um, see on the screen, I'm gonna just read it out to you. The code is 261407. And if you wouldn't mind, it's just two quick questions to get us started so that I know who's used Book Creator, how many, um, where we are as far as um, how, how much experience you have with Book Creator. And then the other piece that I'd like to know about is what you're trying to get out of this session. I want to be able to meet your needs. Okay, looks like the bulk of us have are new to Book Creator, so that's awesome. I'll show you from scratch how to get started, and we have some people that have already used Book Creator. Hopefully, you'll get some tips and tricks along the way here. All right, so how to use it, how to get started. You want your kiddos to use it, of course. Being able to publish their writing in creative ways, but Creator's perfect for that. Excellent. Getting interactive. If you can use it in small group format, yeah, we can talk about that for sure. Incre increasing our student motivation. Sometimes we know that our kids maybe need a little extra motivation when it comes to writing and Book Creator can help us to do just that. Uh, 
Excellent. Okay, and we had um, maybe doing it in distance learning. Yes, we don't know what the fall is going to entail, what it's going to look like. We got to be ready for everything. Um, but Creator is definitely one of those tools that you can use either in person or with distance learning. Okay, so now that I have an idea of where we are all at, it looks like most of us are beginners. Um, I'm going to go ahead and continue on. Thank you for participating in our mentee. So Book Creator, it's basically a simple way to create, read, and share eBooks within the classroom. Um, and it's great because when the kiddos publish their work, they get a simple web link that they can share with others. Um, also, when you invite the kids to be part of the library, you can enable it where all the kids can see each other's books. And so it really builds that sense of community in the classroom uh, and allows the kids to teach others maybe some concepts that they um, didn't know about. Uh, Book Creator is open-ended, it's creative, it's cross-curricular, so we can use it in all different curriculum areas, not just writing. Um, I am going to show you some great student examples so that you can see, uh, you know, the big picture, what it's going to look like, a finished product, and then we're going to um, create. You're going to get to create your first book today. Um, this is a web-based tool, which is awesome because we can use it on different platforms. So right now I'm on a laptop. You can also use Book Creator on a Chromebook. And you can also use Book Creator on an iPad. Um, but I want to just mention one little thing. Um, there are both paid and free versions of Book Creator. I'm going to show you some tricks and tips on how you can just use the free version with your class and how you can make it work with the free version. Um, as far as the iPad goes, um, your kids can create on the Google Chrome browser app on the iPad, I would not suggest getting the Book Creator app for your students or using the Book Creator app for your students um, because while it looks like it's a free app, you end up having to um, subscribe and uh, you know pay. So we never want our teachers to have to pay for anything. So I would definitely recommend them just using the web-based version, which would just be using the Google Chrome browser. Okay, so I am going to share this quick video with you um, because it's so simple. It shows how to create a book, but very, very quickly and very streamlined. That way, again, you can see the big picture, see what it looks like. Um, so I'm gonna share this video with you. It's only a couple minutes long.
Okay, so I love that video because I feel like it's short and sweet to the point. It shows exactly how you will be creating in Book Creator and you can see how easy um, to use the interface is. It's very simple and um, it's very simple and easy even for our youngest learners. I saw that we have some um, teachers in here that teach kinder and your kids can do this. So. Um, all right, so you saw in the title of this session that it's all about unleashing that creativity and um, getting kids to be creators. Um, I know that um, this spring we have kind of scrambled to try to come up with activities for our kids. And um, a lot of those activities uh, ended up being a lot of, you know, kind of the drag and drops, which are great and they serve a purpose. But I think that come fall, we are ready to allow our kids to really be creators and not just consumers of information. Um, and so I think you, you'll find that book creator is the perfect way that you can do that. Um, I wanted to share a book with you that I found. This book was actually created in Book Creator and um, it's all about um, inspiring creativity in the classroom and getting kids to be creators. Oop. So let me share this. So this you can see um, similar to the video, you can tell this is actually in Book Creator. Um, and this is a book that someone else created all about, uh, you know, unle unleashing creativity, getting kids excited about learning. So just some ideas here. Uh, we know that that there's, you know, starting this shift. We know that our system, we could make it better. We know some of the jobs of the future that our kids might have don't even exist today. I don't know if some of y'all have seen this TED Talk. It's Sir Ken Robinson and he gives this um, TED Talk and it sounds kind of negative. It's called Do Schools Kill Creativity? I, I encourage you to watch this TED Talk um, in your own time. It's actually the most viewed TED Talk ever. Um, because he really talks about the importance of uh, letting kids be creators and how that is just as important as reading and writing nowadays. Um, so I highly recommend that. And you can see how you can just pop a video into Book Creator. So I wanted to show you some little tips here. So we know that our education system, while we do try to change things up, uh, it's kind of similar uh, that it's been for, for a very long time. So just this idea of switching and kind of moving, shifting towards um, creativity and communication, collaboration, those kinds of skills. And these are the skills that are replacing those rote learning, memorization type skills. Sometimes we get this question, like, how, how can we measure it? How can we grade this kind of thing? We're thinking rubrics, that kind of thing with your grading techniques. Okay, so these were just some ideas that I saw that I thought were really powerful to help us um, kind of get that, uh, our brains are thinking about how book creator can help our kids be creators versus just consumers of information. Okay, so why use Book Creator? I'm gonna pop back to my presentation here. So why use Book Creator? It's open-ended, it's simple to use, and again, you can infuse creativity throughout the curriculum. So all different subject areas, not just for writing and language arts or reading. Uh, we can engage those reluctant writers, uh, and we know that when kids have an authentic audience, we know they produce awesome work. So if a child knows that they're just going to turn that into the teacher, they might do a good job. But if they know that their peers are going to see their book um, or their parents are going to see their book in addition to their fabulous teacher, um, we know that they put a little bit forth more effort. Uh, so Book Creator, as you saw in that little video, it allows you to just get a web link and share it. Um, and then also within the library, all the kids can see each other's books allows for those four C's as well. And I did want to mention our NISD commitments to tier one instruction, uh, which 
uh, incorporate also John Hattie's research on um, strategies that we can use in the classroom that have a high impact. Uh, these were three different strategies from the NISD commitments uh, that I felt like really went hand in hand with book creation through academic language. Um, book creator is excellent for uh, that vocabulary and um, really great for our ESL and ELLs. Uh, our students can engage in real life relevant experiences um, by sharing what they know by being creators in book creator and then we can also differentiate throughout book creator. So I wanted to show you some student examples uh, because I feel like that way, if you see a few ideas, again, it will get your wheels turning before you actually start creating your own book. So, oh. all right, so I am going to, and I am going to share this link with you all in just a minute um, so that you can explore some of these samples. Okay, so, uh, the samples on this page are uh, categorized in different ways. So you'll see they're categorized first by subject, and these are real student examples. Uh, so we can see the subject area here. I'm gonna skip this one because I feel like you can probably see ways that you can incorporate um, English language arts here. And that's probably a, an easier connection, you know, um, students can create poetry books and, and write, but there's also some other subject areas that I thought were pretty um, powerful that I wanted to share with you. So like, for example, math, uh, getting kids talking about math, writing about math, understanding math, and showing their understanding in a way that's not just a worksheet. Uh, so I'm going to go to this book, for example, um, all about multiplying and arrays. This is a student example. So you can see here when I click this button, it turns to the next page. I know it sounds simple, but the kids love that flip of the page. Um, it's fun for them. So here uh, is what the child has created, uh, sharing what they know about arrays. You can see there they've incorporated a video. Lots of fun backgrounds and, and just fun for them. Okay, so that's one example. I do want to show um, that down here, they also have them categorized by grade level. So you can take a look. Here's some age three to five. Here's grades one to five and so on so that you can check out your grade level um, area and see um, some examples again from, from real students. I want to share this example uh, because it does have the example of kind of creating a class book, which is also an option. So our Big Book of Happiness, and then you can see here um, the kiddos have added their little page. I want to play this because within Book Creator, you can add your voice, and the kids can add their voice, which is so powerful for them. Um, and I love to hear the kids' voices, so uh, let's see. Um, my favorite thing to do is beatboxing. <laughs> beatboxing so cute so you can see how the kids have added their little favorites here and what makes them happy uh, that's an example of a class book uh, and then of course there are individual books as well let me show one more example uh, this was a nice expository one I know sometimes the kids have a little trouble with creating that expository text um, and showing the um, text features and those kinds of things. Uh, so here's just an example, a really great example of one where they even have a table contents. They have little videos and links. So yes, our kids can create this kind of thing on paper, um, but how much more powerful is it to be able to add a video or add a link or add your voice? So in this case, um, the technology, the book creator technology is really transforming what's happening in the classroom um, because kids aren't just writing things, they're able to uh, incorporate some of those little things that they wouldn't otherwise be able to without the technology, which is really what we wanna move towards um, when we're incorporating technology. So these are some examples. Again, I'm going to share this link uh, with you in the chat so that you can explore. And what I'm going to do is give you about four minutes 
to just take a look at that link and um, take a look at the examples. Okay, I've just put it in the chat for you. Um, take a look at those examples and see if you can find maybe some examples that uh, match with something that you teach uh, in your class uh, just to get your wheels turning. So I'm gonna stop talking. <laughs> I'm gonna turn on our timer um, so that uh, after the four minutes, we can come back together. And uh, if you have any additional questions, those please pop them in the chat so that we can answer your questions. All right. Okay, if y'all want to start making your way back to our meet.
Okay, so I hope that you saw some really great examples of uh, some different types of books that you and your students can create in the classroom. Um, now that you've seen some student examples and kind of seen um, the big picture, seen how it's going to work, um, let's go ahead and dive in. And um, I'm going to show you how you're going to get signed in how you're going to get into a library that Michelle has created for us and how you're going to create an all about me book. That's going to be our sample for today um, just uh, to get us started and to get us creating. Uh, so um, I want to point out here that when you're signing in, you're going to want to use the teacher sign in and you're going to want to sign in with Google. Your students will use the student sign in and they will also sign in with Google. So we're going to make use of that sign in with Google so we don't have to memorize new usernames and passwords and all of that. Um, so again, I'm going to show you first and then you are going to have a chance to uh, create and um, try yourself. So let me share my new tab with you. I've opened a new tab and I'm going to go to app.bookcreator.com. Again, for now, you can just listen and uh, then in a, in a little while, I'm going to give you time to go and do uh, these different activities. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and sign out. It kind of auto signed me in just so I can show that process for you. Um, when you go to app.bookcreator.com, it's going to look like this. You're going to click teacher sign in and then click sign in with Google. Again, your kids are just going to leave it on student sign in. So teacher sign in, sign in with Google. And since I'm already signed into my portal here, it is going to be able to tell um, that I'm signed in. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my name here. And there I am. All right, let me make sure that y'all can see my, my tab here. One second, I'm just making sure that I have the right tab shared. Okay, there we go. <laughs> so when you first get signed in, um, it's going to look like this. It's going to have your teacher dashboard. And um, you'll notice that you're already going to have one library already created for you called My Books. This library is a private library just for you. And it's a great way for you to create teaching books. So you could create a teaching book, teaching your kids a concept and publish it and share the link with your students, maybe in uh, Google Classroom or in Seesaw and let your kids read the book that you created that taught them something. You can see that this is a private, uh, again, a private library and it has a lock on it. Again, nobody else is welcome into this library. Um, to create a library for your students to join so that they can create a book, you're going to create, click create new library. Again, I'm going to let you guys do this in just a second. So don't feel like you need to be going back and forth, back and forth. I know that's really hard. Um, so you can just stick with me. I'm going to go ahead and name my library Robles and then the year. Uh, you can name yours when you get a turn. You can name yours whatever you like. Um, I want to mention these little settings here. So uh, automatically on, we have all four of these automatically on, allowing the Google image search. I would definitely keep that on. Uh, what's great about that is the kids don't have to go outside of Book Creator, save an image, and then put it back into Book Creator. Instead, they can search for an image right in Book Creator. And what's great also is that those images are already copyright friendly. So the kids are okay to use those in, um, in, their, in their books. Um, students can edit their own books. I would just leave that on so that they can edit their book. Um, now, the reason that's there is if maybe you want to turn that off at some point, let's say our books are due on Friday, I don't want you to edit them after that, you can turn them off, uh, toggle that off. Uh, students can read others' books. This will allow the other students' books to be present in the library so that each kid can read the other kids' books. I think that's really powerful. Again, builds that community of learners. Um, and then students can enable collaboration. 
Um, Michelle, do you want to talk on that piece as far as the collaboration? Because I feel like that is a paid feature um, that we um, that I don't know that we can use within uh, the free version of Book Creator. I went and looked it up just to make sure because I was on the fence about it. But according to Book Creator, the um, having students work in real time collaboration on books is available with a paid plan. Um, students can create their own books and then you can combine them to create a collaborative book. But the real time collaboration, it says that it's only available with the paid plan. So we'll kind of have to play around with that one as we start creating books and just to make sure. Um, but according to their site, it's a paid plan option. Okay, and I do have the free version, but Michelle has the paid version, so um, we'll just have to mess with that. Okay, and then the last one um, is one that they have off, but I would recommend turning that on because um, we want our kids to be able to publish their books online. Um, it does mention that they will be able to, uh, you know, people outside of the library will be able to read our books and I'll just click confirm because I do want, let's say parents to be able to um, see the books and so on. Uh, you'll just want to make sure that your kids have that web publishing permission in those back to school um, forms that they now fill out online. So just make sure they have the web publishing permission for that. I'm going to go ahead and click create create library and you can see here my library has been created and it doesn't have a lock on it because I can invite others to this library so when I click to go into this library there's an invite code right here that I can click on to have my kids join so just take a look don't enter the code anywhere I just want to show you you will give this code to your students for them to join so very, very simple um, to set your book, your um, library up and get your kiddos the code so that they can jump in and get started creating their books. Um, what we're going to do again is create a all about me book. I found this little post that shows step by step by step how to do this. Um, that way I can provide you with that in case you need to like refer back to it. I'm going to share the link with you in just a second. Um, and I'm going to pop it up right now just so I can show you what that looks like. So here we are, just kind of first book idea here, um, creating an all about me book. And it really just has one page, um, but it's just for you to kind of familiarize yourself with the creation tools. And so what I'm going to do is kind of refer back to this and go um, and create my all about me book and uh, then you'll have a turn. So I'm gonna do a new book, I'm gonna choose the shape, and I'm gonna add content with that plus sign just like you saw in the video. So let me go back to my library and let me share this tab. Okay, so I'm gonna click new book and I'm gonna choose a shape. You'll notice that there's even comics here, which the kids love, love, love. And then these are the blank ones. Um, now just know that whatever shape that you choose to start off with, you kind of have to stick with it. You can't change the shape later. So make sure you decide what you like. Um, if you needed to change the shape, you'd have to actually start over in order to change the shape. So I'm gonna do a square book. And I'm going to go ahead and get started with adding some content by clicking on that plus sign. And I'm going to add text and I'm going to add my name here. Again, I'm doing a quick all about me. I just want to show you how it works. Um, you'll see I have my name selected with the blue handles. And then I can click that I, that inspector tool, in order to make it look better, make it how I want it. So here I have the font size. I can make my name bigger. I can change the font here. Um, I can change the color. I can to, ah, I didn't mean to do that. I don't want a background for my text box. Okay, and then if you want a shadow, you can add a shadow, looks fancy. So I'm gonna just stretch this out here so that you can see my name a little bit better. And then I'm gonna pull it here. Okay, if you want, you can even make that centered. 
Okay, so first thing you're going to add your name. I'm going to go back to that blog post just to or that post just to show you how it does show step by step by step how to do it um, because you're going to do this and I want you to have this resource so that if you forget what I said, you'll be able to go back. So again, styling your text here. I'm going to add a photo in just a second and I'm going to record my voice and model that um, so that you can see. All right, so I'm going to again click my plus sign to add additional content. Now, one thing I noticed yesterday um, is that I have to turn off my camera in the meet in order to be able to use my camera in Book Creator. So you might encounter that if you have your camera on like I do right now, it won't let you take a picture. So what I'm going to do is go to my meet, turn off my camera, and now I'm going to click camera and it's going to allow me, there I am, take a picture. So I'm just going to click like take a picture. There's also a video recording. So there's my picture. I'm just going to click use picture. And there it is, pops it in really quickly. You can adjust the sizing here. Very simple. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to add some additional content. I'm going to click the plus sign again. And this time I'm going to record my voice. You can record your voice, tell us your name, tell us um, what you're excited about this summer. Um, tell us what you're excited about for the new school year. Um, whatever you'd like to say is fine. I just click record, then click start recording. Gives me a countdown. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Robles, and although I'm a little bit nervous about what's going to happen this fall, I'm super excited about all of the possibilities that we have um, to really engage our students and get them excited about learning. You saw that stop recording button. Now I can listen to my recording and make sure I like it. Um, you know, when kids are recording their voices, I would definitely, definitely suggest that you require them to listen to their, their uh, recording before they click use recording. Uh, we wanna make sure that they're listening to see whether they can be understood, um, listening to see uh, whether or not we can hear them uh, and those kinds of things. And again, this is so great for our ELLs and uh, really for any student. We, we love to hear them and um, get them speaking. So I'm gonna use that recording. You can see that little um, button pops up. I can move it wherever I'd like it to go. Let me show you a couple other things and then let you guys jump in and get started. I am going to show you something cool with this pen. Now I can just draw on my work here and I can make a little drawing here. Um, but I want to show you something super cool. Erase that. Um, something else super cool that we can use um, with the pen. I'm going to click that plus sign again and hover, uh, click on pen. The first one I used was this one, but I'm going to use this auto like magic draw just to show you something really cool. So when I use that type of pen, and I'm going to just like create something really quickly. Sorry, I'm using my trackpad and not even a mouse. So like I want to make like a little pool because I love swimming. OK, guys, take a look up here. It's like guessing what I'm trying to draw. It knows that I'm not very good <laughs> and it's guessing what I'm trying to draw. So I was trying to draw a pool and take a look. It has an image of a pool. And when I click on it, there it is. A little magic draw, boom. The kids love that. <laughs> now, sometimes I like for them to not use that so that they can really just show their drawing. Um, but, you know, sometimes that's fun to use as well. I just wanted to show you all that because yesterday people were geeking out over that and loving it. Okay, so moving right along, um, I might do uh, – like a, a background on here, you can you can change all of that kind of thing, uh, change textures and those kinds of things. So I'm going to stop, and because I want you guys to explore it, try it, do it, and see what you think. Um, when it's time for me to publish, and I'm done, I can cl click the My Books button to get back, and then you'll see here this Share button. This is our little sharing button. I can click here and click publish online. And it just wants me to have a title so I can give it a title and click publish book. 
and yay, my book has been published. I can read this book online. Here is my book, and then again, this is where they can flip through. My book was only one page, so that's why it was um, short and sweet, um, but the kids will be able to easily flip through that book um, that they created, and their friends will as well. So let me get back here because I want to show you guys how you are going to create. What you're going to actually do is join a library that we've created. Um, that way you can see what it's like to be a student. Um, but you're still using the teacher sign-in. Since you're a teacher, we don't want to get the program confused on who's a teacher, who's a student. So you're still going to use the teacher sign-in. And I'm going to model that for you again. So you're going to click on the teacher. Oh, let me share that tab. <laughs> click on the teacher sign in here and click sign in with Google. And then once you've signed in with Google, I'm going to click on this button to get back to my teacher dashboard. It's those three top lines at the top left. What you're going to do to join a library because you're going to join one to be a student today, is you're going to click this Join a Library button, and it's going to ask you for a code. So you should be able to sign in first, and then click Join a Library, and I'm going to give you the code that you're going to enter in order to get into our library. Um, so let's go ahead and I'm going to share this link with you that shows the step-by-step -step in case you need it. So here's that link. I just put it in the chat for you. And then here is the code for you to get in. I can also pop this code into the, the meet link as well. Okay, that's the code to get into my class. Okay, so go ahead and go to, you're opening a new tab on your computer and you're going to go to app.bookcreator.com and click teacher sign in. And then after you get signed in with Google, if it's your very first time using Book Creator, it's going to take you just a second longer because it's going to ask you what grade you teach and those kinds of things to get you started. So um, take a second to input all the information that it asks for. And then once you're signed in and you've signed in with Google, you're going to click that join a library button and then you're going to enter the code. It's on the screen and it's also in the chat if you just want to copy and paste it. Okay, looks like some of you are getting in there. Very nice, very nice. All right, so go ahead and get started on your book. If you have any questions as you're creating, please don't hesitate to ask them in the chat and Michelle and I will do our best to respond to you. Um, if you are bored by the All About Me book idea, you're welcome to create a book about whatever you'd like to create it about, um, about your summer, about anything like that. I just wanted to give you all an idea to get you just jump, jumping in. I am gonna give you about 10 minutes um, to get going on creating your book and then we'll kind of touch base and see where you're at if you need more time or if you're doing okay. So go ahead and jump in.
Elizabeth, we're just doing um, the first page, right? Yes, and if you wanna explore and create some additional pages, that's totally fine as well. Thank you. No problem. All right, I'm gonna give y'all some time to join back with us. Um, now that y'all have had a chance to create your very first book creator book. All right, I do wanna share a couple of other tips and tricks that we had um, questions about in the chat, just so kind of everyone can hear it and see it. Um, I showed you how to insert a selfie or take a picture 
in um, your book. And I showed you how to draw a picture and make it look all fancy. Um, but I want to show you how you're going to add images from Google or add images from your computer. So maybe you have some images saved to your computer that you want to include. Uh, you can do that or do a Google search. So to do that, what you're going to do on your book is you're going to click that plus sign like we've learned how to do to add new items. I'm on media right here. And then I'm going to click import. And you'll see here an, a Google um, search comes up and I'm going to just do a dog because you know I love dogs this little one is cute um, one thing that I want to mention again is that um, the great part about enabling the Google search like we did before where we toggled that on um, is that it already um, includes only images that are okay for kids to use. So they're copyright friendly, um, they're open for kids to use. So uh, this makes it way better than them just doing a Google search outside and just choosing any old image. So I'm gonna choose this image and click select and it will add that image there. And then I can of course resize it by clicking on it and dragging the handles. All right, so I think that answered most of the questions. Michelle, were there any other questions that you feel as though I could clarify? I wanted to, I wanted to clarify one piece. Sure. Only because Robin talked about getting into somebody else's book. Okay. Um, for this presentation, we are using the paid version of Book Creator, so you are able to collaborate on books. And the reason we chose to use the paid version for this is normally when you create a library, you can only have 40 books in one library. And because we have 50 participants, we needed to extend the size of our library to make sure that everybody um, was able to publish and get into the library. So that's why the collaboration feature is working because you're using the paid version right now. And so I just wanted to make sure that um, everybody understood that usually a library, again, you can only have 40 books, but once you publish those books, then you can go in and delete them and have your students still create books um, using this resource. Right, so I wanted to show you guys that little trick um, because I know if you're like me, like I don't wanna pay for it and we can totally um, make Book Creator work and kind of get around that. Um, the only reason we wanted to use it again today was since we had 50 people, uh, we wanted to make sure everyone had a turn to create a book. So I wanna show you really quick because the next thing you're going to do, um, now that you've joined a library and you've kind of experienced what Book Creator can do for you and what Book Creator is all about as a student, I want you to be able to kind of dive in a little bit more to the teacher side. So um, I'm gonna show you again how to create your library. Um, remember I created this library and you'll see here it says one of 40 books is being used. That was the book that I created with the little pool, my little selfie. Um, but let's say that my kids fill up these 40 books and I'm if I try to click create new library now, it's going to ask me to upgrade. Um, but to kind of get around that and make it where um, you can still have your kids uh, work for free, um, you would just want to make sure all of the kids publish their book and you guys have all those links. Um, and then I can come here to these three dots and I can archive this library. And now I'm able to create a new library. That doesn't delete the books. It just archives the library and um, those links still work and you can still view those books. So really great. So now I'm gonna show you again how you can create your first library as a teacher. And um, so you can have it set and all ready for the fall or maybe for summer school if you're teaching summer school. And um, I'm gonna show you again how to find that code. Uh, remember, you put the code when you click join a library, your kids will just need your code. Um, you're not gonna use the code I gave you because that's for our library. You wanna make sure to use the code for your library. So real quick, I'm gonna get in. If you're in here, like you're in your book, to get out and get back to the teacher dashboard, you're going to click those three lines at the top left. And it takes us right back here. And then now let me show you again how to create a new library. 
and how you're going to get the code for your kits. So I'm just simply going to click Create New Library, title my library, and then remember you're going to want to um, adjust these settings how you see fit. I like toggling all of the settings on. Uh, that last setting, you just want to make sure that your kids have web publishing permission uh, when they get back to school in the fall. And then just click Create Library. And now I'm going to go into my library. And this right here is where you're going to get the code for your kiddos. So this is the code that I would give to my students. And lots of different ways you could do that. Um, if we're in person, you know, and in, in, in we're back to school and you have your kids right in front of you, of course, you can just put this up on the screen and have your kids join right there. If we're in the situation where, um, you know, some of us are home and some of the kids are at home and they're doing distance learning, um, we want to be, you know, ready for both. Um, you can simply uh, copy and paste this code into Google Classroom or into Seesaw to invite your kids to join your library. And what your kids are going to do is just like you did, they're going to go to app.bookcreator.com and they're going to choose student sign in and sign in with Google. So makes it really easy. They don't have to remember any new usernames and passwords. It works with their portal just like it does with ours. And so we're gonna take a minute for everyone to create their first library just like I did and so you'll click create a new library and just make sure you can locate that um, code so that you know what to give to your kids. Elizabeth. Yes. So once I create my new library is this does this mean everybody other teachers can see my library, my kids' library, or is it a I'm going to have a different app, or how does that work? Uh, yours is going to be separate. So unless you invite someone with that code, they cannot see your library. So you would have okay. to give them the code. Okay. I'm going to answer Jill's question. She's asking about multiple libraries. So with this version, um, like Elizabeth pointed out earlier, you have your library where you can create teaching books that you use with your students, but then you also have your student library where your students would be creating books, but you do have a limit of only 40 books at one time that can be in there that students are working on. Once you publish a book, then that allows you to add another book as well. But you can also PDF books once um, the students are done and you can save that to your Google Drive and then you can share that link with parents, um, you know, via Seesaw or whatever a sharing app that you're using with your parents. And, and yes, once you publish the book, you can always go back and unpublish it if they noticed a mistake or anything like that. Okay, my question is, um, I have my library set up, but when Elizabeth was showing us those blue slides to move over to unlock it, I forgot to do that. that oh, I can show you. Cool. Well, actually, that allows the students to, app, to publish their own books, but the teacher can publish their books at any time. Oh, okay. That's good to know. Yes, but she can show you that's part of the setting, so you can go back and change okay. it. Okay, yeah, let me show you that. I think I know how to do that, let's see. Okay, here it is. So when you are, um, if you want to change the settings like you forgot to toggle, like she mentioned, um, just go back to your library, open it up, and then there's a little gear at the top right. And so then this is where you can change those settings there and then uh, update that. Okay, so moving right along, I was taking a look at some of y'all's books in the library and y'all did such a great job with your books. 
Okay. So I want to give you some resources moving forward. Um, so Book Creator, as you saw on the uh, when we showed you the sample books, Book Creator has so many great resources for you. And I actually use the Book Creator resources to learn how to book, use Book Creator myself just from scratch. I had never used it. Um, so I want to point that out because, you know, I know this is just an hour and a half session and you might um, need some additional help moving forward. Uh, so definitely want to share you uh, with you some resources. So when you are in your teacher dashboard, you're going to notice there's there, that there's a tab that says resources here. And when I go to that tab, it has resources by grade level, and then it has resources by subject area, and just different ideas, different tips and tricks. Um, then I want to point out that if you scroll all the way down, there's also a way that you can become a book creator level one certified author. And if I click view course here, it's actually going to add another tab to my dashboard that says certification. And um, you don't have to get certified by any means, but I wanted to point it out because it is a step-by-step-by-step -by -step -by -step tutorial. You can see here we can navigate different, um, how to add a shape, how to import media, how to use the camera. So if you forget how to do any of that, um, this will show you exactly what to do. So I'm going to show you how to get this tab again on your teacher dashboard. Um, what you're going to do is click resources. Scroll all the way down to the bottom where it says become a certified author and click view course. And now you should see that certification tab here in your teacher dashboard. That way you can always refer back to it for little tips and tricks and training. And, and if you want, you can, of course, become a certified book creator author. So if you want to take a minute just to do that so that that will be there for you, click resources, scroll all the way down to the bottom and click uh, where it says become a certified auth author, click view the course and that certification tab should pop up for you. Okay. Oops. Okay, so moving right along, um, I want to share, uh, I want you guys to, now that you have dabbled in it and you've kind of seen what Book Creator is all about, I want to give you an opportunity to share a project idea with the group. Uh, now, I tried to use the program Jamboard yesterday, um, and I am going to just pop this up just so that you guys can see it because I just love the program, but we ran into a little bit of difficulty because it turned out that only about 25 people could be in there and edit at the same time, uh, so some weren't able to, uh, so I'm not going to have you all use Jamboard, but I am going to show it to you just so that you can get your uh, wheels thinking, and what we're going to do is share a project idea in the chat today. So I'm going to go ahead, oop, let me go, go back and go to this little jam board. Again, this was from yesterday um, and they were able to add, only some of the people were able to add, um, but you can see with uh, Jamboard, it allows um, you to add little sticky notes. Uh, so a little sticky note, and then I can add an idea. Uh, so here are some ideas that they came up with for the K1. Right now, I just wanted to show you some idea. Ooh. I'm sorry, I'm not even showing the correct tab. Here you go. <laughs> Here's the Jamboard. And uh, you can see the little sticky notes. Um, these are just some ideas, second and third grade. Just give you a little brief little view. I am going to share this with you after um, 
after I mark attendance for our session so that you can have a copy of these ideas. And then in a minute, I'm gonna give you all the opportunity to add your own ideas. Um, but instead of using Jamboard so that make, we can make sure everybody can participate, we're going to use the chat feature. Okay, I'm gonna show those a little bit longer. There's some fourth and fifth grade ideas. Here are some second and third grade ideas. And then here are some kinder and first grade ideas. Okay, so what are your ideas? Right now in the chat, please type out what grade level your idea is. So for example, you could put third grade. Um, I'll use Book Creator during my solar system unit. Um, and give us some ideas of how you might use Book Creator in your, in your classroom or in your specialty. You can go ahead and type those in the, in the, um, in the chat for us. Carol and Lindsay, it looks like y'all are uh, thinking the same here, y'all. It would be fun if y'all collaborated on that. <laughs> National Parks Unit, Living and Non-Living, I love it. Landforms. Letter books for kinder, alliteration. We had a couple that mentioned alliteration. Oh, John, about the AT coaches. I love it. Publishing a nonfiction piece. I felt I felt like those examples of the expository writing um, were really powerful. Oh, pin pals. That's sweet. I love that idea too. Okay, so moving right along, um, I wanted to mention to you an opportunity that um, the coaches have come up with, um, with a way for you to really extend your learning and um, really dive deeper with Book Creator. And so what we're going to do is offer two additional hours of credit um, kind of going along with this um, session. And um, the reason why we have decided to do this is we really feel strongly about coaching. And we feel um, that, you know, in order to really transform the learning and for us to actually use what we've learned in a professional development session into our classroom, um, sometimes we need a little extra additional support. So I wanted to share this graphic with you that just shows you some of the professional development outcomes. Um, you know, when we, let's say, demonstrate something and, um, you know, some of us might gain some of that knowledge and, and attain that skill. Um, but in order to really transfer that into practice, uh, it really helps to have a coach supporting you, cheering you on um, there uh, to help you out. And so I want to share with you the um, the activities that you will do if you decide to do this optional extra uh, changing your practice work. Uh, you are going to get this PDF that I'm showing you right now in an, a follow-up email from me through ERO. And uh, this is going to show exactly what you would need to do in order to earn the two additional hours of credit. And um, so if you've been in some of your the summer, summer summit sessions already, you've probably seen this already. Let me just kind of briefly go over what the expectations are. Um, first thing, the due date is Friday, July 10th. So um, you'll want to submit that information to me um, by that 
date. And then let me just share with you the different pieces that go along with that. And uh, so th there's kind of four steps here. The first one being you're going to fill out a teacher reflection page. Then you're going to create a goal for um, how you might use Book Creator in the classroom and the reason why. Then you're going to create a lesson plan. We're awesome at that, right? We do it all the time. So create a lesson plan, sharing and detailing how you might incorporate Book Creator and what that's going to look like in your classroom. Uh, we already had some fabulous ideas in the chat. So um, you might already be thinking about how you might actually incorporate this during the first you know, six to nine weeks of your instruction. And then we have, um, if you need any follow-up or additional coaching, I'm glad to provide that. And what you'll do is just submit these items on this link. It's a Google form and you will just submit those artifacts. So submit your reflection and your goal and your lesson plan. And then I will um, give you the two additional credit hours uh, for uh, doing that additional work and really um, working hard to change your practice practice and transform the learning. Um, so I hope that you'll, uh, you know, take us up on that offer and try that out. We really want to see how that goes um, and see and see what y'all think of that. So I am right now going to go ahead and um, place in the chat the uh, Google form in, 40, in order for you to earn uh, your attendance credit for attending today's session. Uh, so you will be earning one and a half hours of credit for today. And then again, you have that optional opportunity to extend your thinking and extend your learning um, by earning two additional credit hours. Um, so I did want to include this little quote from Sir Ken Robinson, um, the same person that I mentioned earlier today that uh, created that TED talk about creativity in schools. Uh, and he says that creativity is as important now in education as literacy, and we should treat it with the same status. Uh, so just the idea of giving our, our kids the opportunity to be creators and not just consumers of information. And I'm sure that by now you can see how Book Creator is the perfect way that you can incorporate that creativity across uh, your curriculum areas. So let me get that link for you for attendance. And then if you have any additional questions, please feel free to add those into our chat. Michelle and I are still here. And um, so if you need any additional help, uh, we'd be glad to help you with that. Um, thank you again for spending your time with us today in Book Creator. And I hope that you guys have a fabulous rest of your summer and uh, enjoy the beginning of the school year. Elizabeth, I wanted to add one thing really sure, quick. Sure, yeah. If people want to stay on. There is one other way that students can sign on. And it's, uh, I think it's a way to really mention, especially for our littles, if you don't want them to do the Google login, there are QR codes that you can create within Book Creator that your students can just hold up the QR code and scan it, and it'll automatically take them in. So after you do um, your um, attendance piece, I can show you how you can do that within Book Creator if you want to stay on. Awesome. Thank you, Michelle, for offering that.
Michelle, you're asking uh, about diving deeper, um, changing your practice. When we, after we do attendance and there's the follow-up email, in the follow-up email, there'll be information. Um, it'll be the link to that form so that you can fill out that form to uh, let us know that you're interested in taking those next steps. Thank you. You're welcome. Julie, this is automatically covered under the AUP already. Um, so you don't have to get another permission form or anything like that. Oops. Somebody was asking about, I think, the link to the Jamboard with the ideas. You'll get that yes. link in the presentation. Yes, I'm gonna right. send. I'm gonna send you guys that that information. Yeah, with those ideas. Elizabeth, do you mind if I take over the screen? Yeah, please do. Let me let me unpresent. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, right. please please show the the QR code sign in method um, for our littles especially. All right. So let me go over to book creator and go back to my home page and in the upper right corner where my avatar is that's how i'm going to get to my account options and do you see right here where it says student logins you can select student logins and um, you can add all of your students so right now this is one i'm already in a, a class that has several students in here but notice you know, this for this presentation that I did, I had added my students by number, but once I get that done, I can print all QR badges. And so each student has their own personal badge that they can use to scan to get in. So if they're on the app on the iPad and they're using Chrome, they'll press um, sign in with QR code and they just scan that and it automatically takes them in and everything they do will be created by Bruce, um, you know, or whatever their card says. If they're on a Chromebook, they have to allow the camera once they press the QR code, and then they just hold it up to the front of the Chromebook and it'll automatically take them in. So this is a way for them to have to, that they can bypass the signing in with Google um, and it gets them in right away. And I've had teachers use this and they print it on cardstock and the students keep it in a folder or she collects them and they're on a ring. Um, but anytime they want to create or to sign into Book Creator, they just use the QR code instead. And then I just saw this. This is a new feature that it, you can download login links. So I guess you could actually share this with students as well if you wanted to post this in Google Classroom. Um, there's actual links that would take them in there as well. That's a brand new piece. I hadn't seen that before. So learn something new every day. <laughs> okay, let's see here. We had a couple additional questions. Um, okay, let's see. Edna, what information did you want emailed? Feel free to turn on your mics, guys, if you have a yeah. question. <laughs> There's a few of us in here. <laughs> oh, it looks what like what you just show anything. us to do, Michelle. Oh, sure. What you were doing. Um, How to get the QR codes? Yes, please. Yes. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank hey, girl, I'm still follow you. <laughs> We're going to get the recording of the session. So Michelle just showed us and it's recorded in the session. Yeah, I'm going to share oh, that's right. the recording with you guys um, after I post the attendance. And then um, like y'all have like 24 hours to do the attendance and then 48 hours for me to post that and all of that. After I 
mark you present, then I'm going to form an email that has the presentation in it and um, all of that follow-up information about how to change your practice. Uh, so yeah, the video will be in there along with the presentation. Um, so hopefully that will be helpful for you guys. I'm honest, I, I need to see it on paper. Yes. <laughs> You're not alone, somebody. I know, I'm the old fashioned. I need my direction. <laughs> Elizabeth and I are like complete opposites. She's, you know, that young millennial who just listens to everything. Whatever. I'm the paper queen who writes everything down. Yeah, I can't remember the last hey, time that I wrote notebook. with actual note paper. Like I just, it's not my style. <laughs> But then, you know, Michelle always rescues me when I, when I, right. when I just listen and then I'm like, oh, what was that? But I just want to share that you and Michelle, I love the way you guys go step by step so it's easy to understand. Because sometimes when you're so knowledgeable, it's hard because you know what to do and you go so fast. But I've been in Michelle's class. And it has been a great learning experience. And Elizabeth, I just met you earlier on, on the virtual one. And I couldn't practice because I was uh, driving and I finally got home. But um, I thank you both. So, oh, thank you. You welcome. totally made my day by saying that. Thank you so much for saying that. And I do have a quick question. Sure. When I log in to, to my book, create the app, would I see the page that I just worked on it? Or do I have my separate account? Or how does that work? It's going to be in your um, libraries that, and it, I think it says shared with me. Let me just share my screen really quick so that you can see what I'm talking about. Um, so you'll still be able to see that book. Let me show you. And then if you want to go ahead and publish it and grab the link to that book or grab the PDF to that book, um, then you'll, um, you can always have that link. But you'll see here in my teacher account, um, I have this uh, area, this shared with me area where I joined a library. And um, so you'll just go into this library to find your book. And then you're going to click this uh, share option and click publish online. And that's going to give you that link. You can also, um, you know, print it if you want. Uh, so but or get an ebook. When you click print, it prints it as a PDF. Okay. So then you could just save it. Right. Put it in your, um, your Google Drive. Okay. But um, my question is, like, when I log in, I'm only going to see my library that you want to create for my students and whatever I was part of that they share with me, just like my Google Drive, right? But yes. when I when I invite my students, they would only see the library I created for them. Is that correct? Yes, they yes. unless they were in like an old class and already used it, then they'll have multiple libraries. Um, okay. But Otherwise, they only see the one library that okay. they are a part of. They can't even see these books um, in your My Books section. Okay. Um, they can only see the ones that um, are in with, unless you send them the link specifically to a book. Otherwise, they can only see that um, that okay. library that that you invited them to join. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. I have a question. When she was um, showing us how to, um, I guess, add students. In fact, now I got off the main page. Um, up when we hit the gear and it said student logins, and it, she had like student one and was talking about that. When I click that on mine, it just is like a big blank screen. So do we have to type our students' names in? Yes. I was just happened to be in a class that already had students added. So that's why mine had student one, student two. So you'll just type in the names of your students. And then once you have them typed, then you'll just click generate QR codes. And then you'll be able to print those out. And it will okay. have their name by the QR code that belongs to them. Okay. So when the school year starts and we're adding yeah. our kids, we do need to do that as opposed to, or do we just have them get on a device and go to the website and type in our code? Like, does it automatically put them then in that? library or we really only, do need to add them 
only so if they use the sign in with Google method, uh -huh. it will automatically add them and it will have your, their name and you'll be able to see who is who. If you choose to use that QR code sign in method for little ones, uh -huh. that's the, w the reason why you would want to add their names. So again, if they're using that sign in with Google, you don't have to type in their names. But they would okay. still have to type in the code to join Correct. your library. Okay, so like I teach fifth graders, so when the school year starts, if we're at school, the easiest way would probably be then for them just to. I would have them the sign site. With, Google. <laughs> with Google. Okay. Yeah, for sure, for yeah. fifth grade, they're so used to it, and they use the portal all the time anyway, so it will auto sign them in. Uh, you know, when they're in the portal, and then all they would need is that code, that invite code, uh -huh. the very first time, and then they're in. Um, if you archived a library and you created a new library, um, you know, to so that you can get those 40 books, like you could delete books or you can archive it. Anyways, if you archive it, create a new library, it will be a different invite code. So you'd want to give them the code again if you had to create a new library, if that makes sense. Okay. And so when they um, want to get in a second time, though, when they go to the website and hit student, they just sign in with Google. They don't have sign to do a code. Google. Nope. Sign in with Google. And, and if it's the same library that they already used, that library will be there where it says shared with me, just like it looks on your end where you see, like where you join my or Michelle's library, um, they'll see that same thing. So knowing we have shared devices at school, like with, I mean, the fifth graders can handle logging in and logging out, but you know, like for Seesaw, it was easier for us just to have them sure. scan a QR code instead of having to go in with their email and yeah. you know, for mm -hmm. the ones that didn't log out. So, cause this is not an app. So on the iPad, I, yes. So I would still recommend they use the sign. I don't know. I just feel like at uh -huh. that age, so they, they, they got to sign out. out. Yeah, and probably most likely your kids will be using Chromebooks. I would uh, assume that, that uh -huh. you know what, that's a big assumption. That might not be the case, yeah. um, but, you know, if they're using iPads, they would need to use the browser, so the Chrome browser that's uh -huh. already on the iPads, and I would still just have them sign in with Google, especially for fifth grade. Okay. If it was, if it was like, first grade, I would be like, yeah. yeah. Okay. Use, I just feel like at this point, because of distance learning, our kids mm -hmm. know how to sign in with Google. Like oh, they're yeah. just good at it now. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know. Uh, and honestly, if they don't remember to sign out, when they sign in, depending how you set up your library, they're not going to see everybody's books. If you don't remember it at the beginning, Elizabeth talked about being able how to, you select. to see others' books. If you turn that off, and they don't sign out, they're only they're going to see somebody else's book. Okay. And so, you know, they're going to quickly know that they're going to need to sign out. Okay. So knowing our library could have uh, 40 books in it, we give everybody an assignment and they get on and they do it. Then the next time we would probably have to archive that in case we didn't have enough space for the kids to add a new book. Right. You could archive more than 20 kids. Or you could just go ahead and like publish their books or um, save them as PDF and then delete okay. them and start over. Okay. Okay. Hey, so when they publish the book and they publish online, where can they have access? Like the parents, where do they go? Do they have to go to book creator or when it's online, where is it online? That's, that so, makes so are you asking how the parents will view the books? Yes, because you okay, say so, we publish it and then uh, publish online. So when yes. it goes online, do we look by it's the link. link? So let me just show you that again really quickly. Okay. Um, so right. now I remember. <laughs> they get a link, and so then they can just copy that at link and send it. So really quick, yeah. let me just show you. When I go into um, – a book at the bottom of every book, you'll see the share send button. And Jill, I'm going to answer your question here as well. And uh, when I see that share send button, I'm going to click publish online. And then I'm going to give my book a title. This is Christine's. And I'm going to click publish book. Yay, your book has been published. Um, then I'm going to, 
you can see I'm going to copy that link to the clipboard just by clicking here. Mm -hmm. And then uh, once I've copied that, I can just paste that and then I can view that book. So then okay. parents can view that book. So um, you could post those links on Seesaw as a link. Okay. Um, you can post them on Google Classroom. Uh, you can email them. Uh, Jill, you can, so like I said, you can actually post this link in Seesaw. You know how it says, I'm trying to remember when you start a new thing. I think link is one of the options. Right. It would be a link. And so it would be a link or, um, or you can click that share button, click print. It's going to open as a PDF and then you could put that in your drive and share, share it that way as a file. Okay. Okay. So either one, I probably I would recommend the link um, because it's interactive. Whereas this one, I have to like scroll through. Um, the other one has that page turn feature, and it just looks better. So I would recommend that for. Um, okay, thank you. So I just thought it was somewhere online. So if somebody doesn't have the link, they cannot see it. Only people who have the link will have access to it. Yeah, I haven't seen where you can see other people's um, work That's unless right. they publish it to like the C the book creator site. It's yes, and after yes, Jill, after you archive that link is still active. Right, and just so you know, the the links from publishing are private. It says when you go to publish, it says once published, your book can be read on bookcreator.com with a private link. And you, you. To share the book with. So it's almost like unlisted where, Correct. you know, people can see it, but only if they have the link. My and as, far, as far as giving instructions on, there's no way to really give instruct. I, I, and I'm sorry, I did flip grid this morning and now I think it's all starting to run together. Run together. Yeah, no, I understand. As far as like instructions for what the kids, for what they do, uh -huh. we didn't see that on there, was there? It was more like we're giving verbal instructions and they would, or if we had so, made a, a classroom assignment, we would tell them there and then they would yeah, go in and do it. Yeah, this is what I would do. Probably me personally, if it were me, I would probably create a quick screencastify showing them how to create. Um, and then remember how I sent to y'all that little blog post that had the all about me book and how to create it. You could either give them that because it's already there and created, or you could create something like that with a step-by-step -step procedure. Um, honestly, the Screencastify is probably going to be the easiest um, because then they can actually see it. Um, I will say this, though, that Book Creator also has tons of resources on their page that um, show and they have some uh, helpful areas for kids, too, like um, that help kids. So I would also explore that resources section and um, see if maybe you can find something that meets your needs. Um, but screencast, if you've not used Screencastify, that one is a great one for creating little tutorial videos for the kids. Okay, no, I haven't tried that before. Because okay. Flipgrid, this Flipgrid, well, I'm thinking, okay, I did it with Zoom. So I'm going to do it with Zoom. And I'm assuming on Google Meets, I could share my screen sure. and explain it that way. But, and record, um, yeah. But does uh, with this Flipgrid, I know you record yourself talking, but there's not a way to share a screen on Flipgrid, you know right? What? Unless you're doing the whiteboard explain. Flipgrid, I believe, does have a new feature like that. Um, Michelle, do you know? I think okay. it's called... I think it's called stories or uh, something mm -hmm. like that where you can share your screen. Um, what I'm going to do, Christina, if you, because I've taught the Screencastify session and I've actually okay. created a video that okay. shows how to use Screencastify. Oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah. So can you, though, email me? Yeah. It's just Elizabeth.Robles and just ask me for the Screencastify video because I have it, but I, I'll forget. <laughs> Okay. Um, so if you don't mind emailing me and requesting that, um, it's about 10 minutes long and it shows you step by step how to use Screencastify. Um, that way you can do that. Um, I know, I don't know what it's going to look like in the fall, but it sounds like, you know, at some point, lots of us might be doing some distance learning. So I really think that tool is going to help you in general, 
to create little tutorials for your kids. So I okay. just think it's really invaluable. And I think it would be great if you could learn how to do it. Oh, yeah. That way you can use it in the fall to share, show, you know, a lot of times mm -hmm. the kids have trouble and they get, you know, they're like, wait, what do I click? And sure. showing them how to proceed through it is going to be your best bet. So, okay. And that's better than trying to do it over a zoom video. I, I don't even know if I we have so. zoom for free anymore. I mean, that might have yeah. been the time so, being. So um, you could totally record a meet and that way uh, and do it that way. Um, but I mean, this is just so easy and it automatically okay. saves to your Google drive and you can grab the link so easily that I would, I would lean towards using screencastify. Okay. Um, that way you can, uh, you know, just do is it. Is that an app like, or it's just we go to that? It's actually address. a Google extension and it's going Google. to go up at the top of your screen after you install it. And the video does show you how to do that too. Oh, thank okay. you, Michelle. Okay. All right. You're thank welcome. you so much. I really appreciate it. All right. No uh, have a good one. Elizabeth, can you email me that too? I'll send an email yeah. to you. Yeah. Just request, say, um, can you send me the Screencastify video so I know what... Okay. What your our school has been using the other one is Screenmatics one. Oh, Screencastomatic. Yes, I really like Screencastify because it works within the Google platform. So again, it automatically will save those to your Google Drive, and um, good. So I, that's what I prefer. Uh, okay. So I'll I'll send you an email. Thank okay, you so much. Thank you so much, ladies. I have to head out too. Okay, thank uh, you. So I appreciate so much your um participation and all of that and hopefully you can make use of book creator in your class okay for sure thank you, thank you. bye, bye.